that this is hooked up is we have these pads over here and they all contain a piezo sensor which is um I have a few over here they all contain a sensor like this basically which creates a voltage when rumbled um, you can see one here on the bass drum pad. This is just my practice pad, which I'm using as a bass drum just by uh, stomping on it. I'm looking to get uh, a bass drum pedal to make an actual bass drum. But um, at the moment I'm just stomping on this for bass drum. And it also holds the Arduino itself and um, a little uh, breadboard right here to just experiment. Forget about this. Um, this part. This is a multiplexer I'm going to use later to expand my uh, my inputs here on the Arduino because the Arduino only has the five uh, analog inputs which I'm using for um, uh, velocity sensitive pads and these pads they're made really cheaply. Um, this snare drum pad right here um, <laughs> This is actually um, a cat toy. It's like a um, like a cardboard thing, and it looks like a uh, turntable for DJs. And this would be the actual um, record disc thing where the cat is supposed to be scratching on it, but he didn't like it, so I used it to make a drum out of. And then there's just these two pieces of uh, uh, carpet I had lying around. And then the piezo sensor sits somewhere uh, underneath here in the middle. It's very um, sensitive right there. Um, the the sensor itself, uh, we can see this right here. That one. They are connected with a um, a one m transit uh, resistor. Sorry, a one m resistor right there. Um, basically the, uh, the, uh, gold ring of the resistor, uh, sits, uh, at the red, red wire side, and, um, I can't really see, I think it's brown or orange, the other ring, the other, um, last ring, and that sits on the, on the black wire, so it just sits in between the black and the red wire, and then that is all connected to, um, the black part coming out is connected to ground the red wire is connected to an input here on the Arduino and that sends all the messages back to uh, via USB to uh, to the computer right there and um, we'll, we'll, we'll jump inside there and look at the code for a bit so if we just have a quick look here at how this thing ties together um, we uh, we saw that there was a USB cable coming out of the Arduino going into the computer that is basically sending us uh, messages over serial um, to the computer which we can pick up with this piece of software I downloaded called uh, Hairless MIDI Serial I believe um, there's a Windows version as well I'm not sure about a Linux version but uh, you basically select the serial port um, you're using and in my case that's the USB modem and it will open that um, port and start routing MIDI messages to whatever is selected here in the MIDI out. To set this up correctly um, what I had to do was go to my uh, audio MIDI setup um, basically you show your MIDI studio I had to enable this device the IAC driver and create a port on that uh, so, like so um, which creates a routing point um, so that this software right here which is a standalone VST host called VST Lord it's free um, can pick up on that port see this one matches that one and then will route all those signals to 
the VST plugin addictive drums we have running in here. You can use any drum plugin. Um, you can use any software. You could use Logic, you could use um, Ableton on Windows, Fruity Loops, and anything basically. Any any software that runs sounds and can take uh, MIDI routing. So that's about it. That's how the whole setup works. Um, yeah, let's jump into the code. I downloaded a um, MIDI library. I'm not sure what it's called, but if you do some research on uh, on serial to MIDI for Arduino, you'll you'll stumble onto uh, this one, Ardu MIDI, and this one, MIDI. Um, I tried this one, didn't really work for me, so I chose this one. Um, you create your default instance. I have a set of thresholds right here, um, some other variables. I will explain them later. Um, these are my uh, analog inputs. So these are uh, the inputs the pads are connected to. They're analog because uh, the piezo sends out uh, a higher voltage when you hit it harder, when you rumble it harder. So you get a velocity sensitivity that way. And then I have a simple uh, push button for my hi-hat pedal. I didn't show you that because um, I turn it off at the moment because I have no access to it with my foot. So it doesn't, it works, but it isn't playable. Um, and then some uh, some default values um, and, a, and a little boolean that I'll explain later. Um, this is some mapping where I get like, um, you know, uh, simple accessible variables to use that map to MIDI notes for addictive drums specifically. They'll probably map to pretty much any other drum plugin as well since there's kind of a standard, not really, but kind of. Um, in your setup function, you uh, make a call to MIDI begin. Uh, now this will actually kind of run on um, true MIDI baud rate, which I'm not sure what it is, but it's a lot higher than this. But um, uh, Hairless won't won't accept that, I believe. Um, so uh, that won't work. So we'll just set it to whatever the highest is we can use. In this case, uh, it's this value right here. I set my uh, pedal pin, my digital pin to an input and um, set it to high so that whenever it's uh, not pressed, it's high. Whenever it's pressed, it's low. Um, these functions I will explain later as we go through the loop function uh, right here. So this is our main function and it, um, it reads the analog values for all the different paths into uh, a variable and it reads the pedal value. And then this is basically um, how we play a note. So what happens here is if our value, our kick value right here from the red pin is higher or equals our threshold, which is a um, variable I set over here, which determines the sensitivity of the pad basically. Like the lower this value is, the more sensitive the pad is. And since all my pad designs are different, um, I keep tweaking them to um, make them um, better playable. Um, so if that value and the uh, higher or equals the threshold um, and um, we have a note ready that is set to true, um, then we just play this note. And I will I'll go through this. Note ready basically prevents double hits. When, uh, when a piezo is hit, when one of the pads is hit, it will keep pushing out values for uh, a few cycles because um, isn't just rumble and then it stops. It actually needs some time to settle and you have like residual vibration going on. And all of those cycles would translate to a note hit, which would create this um, uh, sort of machine gun string of notes that we don't want. So we, we don't want it to be that sensitive. And the way we get around it is to give the piezo time to settle. Um, we use a timing function. Now, this can be really easily done using um, just a 10 millisecond delay, for instance, but uh, delay actually um, halts the entire execution of this loop, so nothing else would be done, which uh, would really create problems for us because you will hit a few pads and there will just be a few delay timers queued, and like it's just all kinds of trouble. It wouldn't even work, but yeah. So we're using the, use a non blocking delay method here. 
where um, we give um, we use millis, which is the amount of the amount of milliseconds passed when the Arduino was turned on or reset last. So um, the way that works here, if uh, if millis is um, minus the previous millis, which are set here after um, we hit a note. When a note is playing, we set previous millis to the current millisecond time, and then here we subtract that from um, the now current millisecond time. And if that is greater than or equals our interval, which is um, something we set over here, for instance, the snare has an interval of nine milliseconds, uh, then return true, else return false. So that resolves this little block of the if statement. And now we can say, let's hit a note which is done here. Uh, we give it the value that is read from the pin. We give it the note that we want to play, the kick, which translates to note, MIDI note 36 for addictive drums. We uh, give it a multiplier, but I'm not using that anymore now. And we give it the threshold. And the reason we give it the threshold is that the actual velocity that we want the note to uh, be given for MIDI is the, uh, the value from the pin minus the threshold because um, let's say, for instance, the ride. I didn't show you the ride, but the ride is um, made out of a, uh, a roll of uh, duct tape, an empty roll of duct tape, that cardboard roll that sits inside. And it's super sensitive compared to the other pads. So, like, the threshold has to be 870, uh, which would also mean that if I would just give it the value, um, even like the soft. In, in relativity, the softest way I can play my ride would be 870 something, which would um, make the note always, like you can see here, MIDI only goes to a, a, a volume of 127, so that would get translated in 127. So no matter how hard I hit the ride, it will always be at maximum volume. That's why I take off the threshold of the value first, and then what, whatever is left gets evaluated into uh, a velocity. Um, okay, um, I'm doing some really dirty hacks here to just make my specific kit more playable, but that's not important. And then I'll go quickly over the hi-hat. So what the hi-hat does, um, this, I've already changed this back, but when I was playing it before, you only heard the closed hi-hat. I changed this value to, uh, to be this because, um, as I said, I don't have access to with my foot to my hi-hat button. I still need to make a pedal for that. So, um, but if I had the pedal and it would be like this, basically, um, if my pedal was pressed, so if I have my foot on the button, I would play a play a closed tip hi-hat. And if I have my foot off the button right here, it'd be an open um, hi-hat. And there are four different open hi-hats which translate to um, from less and more openness. So um, A is actually just a little bit open, B is more open, C more open, D is full open hi-hat. And um, I want to, what I'm doing now, the pedal is a digital pin and it's just, it's either open or closed. What I want to do is make that an analog input as well and um, use either a proximity sensor or a um, light sensor to determine how far the pedal is open. So I get more expressiveness out of that. And um, right here um, is where I do some of the pedal logic. Um, you have to make sure again that um, you only play the pedal the pedal sound once when you press down on the button. If you don't have this right here in there, you as, as soon as you press the button, you will just hear an endless string of pedal close sounds. So you, um, because that will always get evaluated every loop and then say, oh, it's closed, let's play it again, let's play it again, let's play it again. So in this case, um, make sure that you use a Boolean or something or whatever you your method is to Make sure that it only plays once until you open it back up um, right here where you release your foot off the pedal and then you can say pedal plate is false and do it again. Say pedal plate is true. Make sure that it doesn't keep playing. And uh, that's about it. That's um, a four piece kit working pretty well.